Dear colleagues, this is a posterior polar cataract. The other eye has been operated by me few days back and that I had PC rent. At the outset, let me tell you that if you are afraid of PC rents, do not do such cases. You must acquire courage to deal with PC rents very efficiently and you must be well equipped to do anterior vitrectomy. In this case, by this time, main incision has been made, one side port has been made on the right side of the main incision. Now I am going to stain the anterior capsule of this cataractus lens. Tripan blue dye has been used, the dye is being washed out. Now in this case I am going to do an adequate sized capsular axis. The axis size I aim for is 5 millimeter or between 5 and 5.5 millimeter. I want to do optic capture if piscirent occurs. Now, viscoelastic substance has been injected. Now I am going to do the rexis. Before that, I want to do the side port on the left side of the main incision. The side port that will be used to use the chopper. Now the capsule is incised with 26 case bent needle. A nice capsular tag is made. This capsular tag is healed with a forceps. I go slowly, anticlockwise, all around. I try to be at equal distance from the margin of the people, and thus I get a very nice round rexus. This has been a very satisfying capsular axis. It is almost 5 mm size. Now I am going to do hydro delineation. I go at a deeper level and then inject the fluid. Go to the other side, scratch the nucleus and thus I have been able to do hydro delineation. You can see a very faint ring all around. The idea is to remove the nucleus when the epinucleus will be there. The epinucleus will act as a buffer. Epinucleus will support the nucleus. Now I am going to, I am not going to rotate this. I am going to do as I do in no hydrofeco, which I learned from Dr. Naran Bartholoy of Jorhat. Here it is. Just divided the nucleus. Now I am trying to hold it at four at seven o'clock and make a chop, but I could not do that very efficiently. Now I turn the probe turn the tip of the FACO probe, turn the tip of the FACO handpiece towards 3 o'clock. Here I hold the nu nucleus firmly and make this job. Yes, I am very happy that I am removing the nuclear piece and the epinucleus is there. Now I turn to the other side and make that chop again and this time I have been able to remove a small fragment of the nucleus. Now I find that the nucleus has separated from the epinucleus and I am able to remove the nucleus nicely. So one half of the nucleus has been removed by this time. This is the other half. Yes, the nucleus has come out. The epinucleus all around is there. So I have been able to remove the nucleus which will drop if I don't 
manage it like this. Now I am trying to pull the epinucleus and yes I have been able to remove a portion of the epinucleus here. Now I turn to the opposite side and try to remove the epinucleus. And here I find that the PC rent is already there. So before I remove this, try to emulsify this, I want to put some viscoat to plug this posterior capsular rent. The rent is from on from uh, 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Here it is. I am injecting this coat underneath this epinucleus and I am removing the epinucleus. Now before coming out, I inject some more viscoelastic substance. And I find that the vitreous has come into the anterior chamber and it has come to the main wound also. So I start vitrectomy. I remove this small epinucleus at 2 o'clock and then start vitrectomy. We go into the antivitreous. I don't remain in I don't remain in the capsular bag or I don't remain in the antechamber. I go into the antivitreous and I use the cutter. Cutting first, then aspiration. Cut rate in this case I used is 1500 cuts per minute and vacuum I used is 175. So, a lot of visco went into the anterior, anterior vitreous. It has come out. Some more are still there. Yes. So, I find that vitrectomy has been done quite nicely. And I am going to remove the cortical matter. This is a Simco cannula. I just be at the margin of the rexis and aspirate it there. I don't pull it at the center where there is a big rent. That's it. Now I go through the side port and remove the sub-incisional cortical matter. Since I have done vitrectomy, these are coming very easily. A B at the margin of the rexis. Here I find that there are some vitreous strands are there. So I stop it here. And I want to do vitrectomy again. So I ask for the cutter again and do some more vitrectomy. Here it is. Sometimes I intermittently irrigate. Irrigate and sometimes I remove the irrigation and just 
to only cutting and aspiration. That's it. Now see what happens when I try to remove the cortex which is there at 5 o'clock from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock actually. And we can see the rent clearly. It's like looking like a spindle. Yes, you could see that some cortical matter went into the antivitreous on the right side. You can see the white glow there. And sometimes this cortex comes out if we just do cutting in the antivitreous. Let us see what happens. I have asked for the cutter again. I am going into the antivitreous. The irrigation is through the right side board. And the cutter has gone into the antivitreous and sees what happens. Yes, that cortex came out and it was removed. So many a time we can remove the cortex. If we go into the antivitreous, it can come. Now I am trimming the posterior capsule. That's it. Now in this case I have already selected a multi-piece foldable intraocular lens. The other eye had PCRent and I was sure that this eye will also have PCRent. I am enlarging the main incision little bit say by 0.2 millimeter. And now I am injecting a multi-piece intraocular lens under irrigation. It can be done. It can be done with Alcan's B cartridge where you can use only one hand. I didn't use this plastic substance because most of it will go into the antivitreous. However, I could do that and see. I have implanted it under irrigation. The leading haptic has gone between iris and anterior capsular rim. But it is taking too long time to unfold. Sometimes these lenses take very long time to unfold in water. I am injecting some viscoelastic substance over the anterior capsule in the concavity that has formed and now I am going to implant the trailing haptic. This is SPMC over the epithelial surface of the cornea. Now I am going to implant the trailing haptic in the sulcus. I am waiting so that it unfolds some more. If it unfolds, it will be easier for me to implant it in the sulcus. Next time, probably I'll use viscoelastic substance to implant this lens. Now, here is the trailing haptic is being placed between iris and the anterior capsular rim. Now both the haptics are over the anterior capsular rim. I dial the lens and place the haptics, the haptic optic junctions at 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock. Now I am going to aspirate the viscoelastic substance that I used over the anterior surface of the intraocular lens. 
Now the lens has unfolded nicely. Now I am irrigating out the viscoelastic substance from the anterior chamber. And I find that there is no vitreous, but I will confirm it injecting some triamcinolone acetate just after a few minutes. Now I am going to remove the viscoelastic substance from antivitreous. Some amount of vitreous, some amount of viscoelastic substance I could see and I am removing that viscoelastic substance from behind the lens. And now I am just pushed the lens and the optic has gone behind the erexis margin. Now I am going to use air and then pilocarpine and then triamcinolone acetate. This is pilocarpine. I want to constrict the people and if there is no peaking of pupillary margin then this is one taste that vitreous strands are not coming from antivitreous around the people towards some incision. Now this is triamcinolone acetate and um, this has been used undiluted and I am removing it immediately just after a few seconds and I find that there is no there is no vitreous strand in the anterior chamber. So there is very nice optic capture and the anterior chamber is formed nicely. Hydration of the side ports are done. It was a long surgery of about 25 minutes. I have edited out about 5 minutes. Dear friends, patience is very essential in such cases. Unless you have patience, you cannot do such surgeries. Hope this video will help you in developing your skills in cataract surgery. Thank you very much for your attention and here it is the end point, the antechamber is formed and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention.